to our uh, third segment of the uh, Lana video blog and uh, I'm delighted to have uh, a guest speaker today. Um, I would like to introduce you to Mark. Uh, Mark is uh, uh, driving the uh, strategy uh, within uh, Equinops, one of our partner. And um, so we want to give a little bit of an insight. So welcome Mark uh, joining us. Um, I'm happy to have you uh, uh, on here. Um, so I'd like to get a little bit of an insight on uh, Equinops, uh, a bit of a background where, you, where the company is coming from and what's so special on uh, when selecting Equinops as a uh, universal CPE uh, deployment um, over potentially others. So if you can give us a little bit of an insight on that, that would be great. Hey, good morning, Ben. Uh, thanks a lot for, for hosting this webinar with us, right? So, uh, yeah, so let, let's introduce quickly uh, what Equinops is doing and, and why Equinops uh, uh, is a good choice uh, in regards to universal CPE and how our combined solution uh, could make the difference uh, on that particular market. So briefly to introduce Equinops, uh, so we are a European-based company, our HQ is in France. So we, we used to be very well known, especially for the Access brand, uh, with what we have called One Access, which is one of the brands of Equinops. One Access is a router provider uh, from the past, so we are the number three in the world, uh, so behind uh, Cisco and Huawei, in terms of uh, CPEs uh, for uh, termination points. And we are a very innovative company and technology company driver. So we used to sell through service providers. We are not selling directly to enterprise. So service provider are used to consume our product and we are really focusing on that market. And, and what I'm saying, we are a very technology company. At the end, half of our staff is in R&D in reality. And we spent a very large amount of our, uh, of our money uh, to support the R&D investment that we are doing. We are present all around the world. Uh, so of course, we have a strong presence in Europe, where we have also a, a support and manufacturing side, but and we have also representation in the in US market, in Asia Pac, in Australia. We are very well present as well in, in these countries uh, and also in the Middle East. So we, we have a broad coverage in regards of picking up. From revenues, we are around 100 million per year. We, we are growing now since, uh, since two years with a double digit growth. Uh, since two years, so that's very, uh, very good. Uh, so definitely we, we have a strong background uh, in terms of technology in order to address this market. So to come to one of the, the points you mentioned is why uh, are we doing that and why uh, Equinox One Access decided to move to this UCP market. The, the first driver is really this NLV initiative uh, with that, which has been launched by service provider and uh, which comes to the disaggregation of the edge, where finally service provider wants to purchase on one side the hardware, on the other side and the software, the middleware and third party VNF. We know, uh, uh, and I think we discussed that several times, uh, uh, even we can say everything is virtual, at the end of the day we still need a platform to run and we still need an efficient platform to run. And, and that's also why uh, on our side we work a lot with partner uh, and with Liner, especially at Intel, to leverage uh, their, their technology in order first to be very open uh, in, in our solution, to be deployable finally on any kind of uh, UCP and dif different kind of uh, CPU, power and these kind of things, but also uh, to be open to us any third party VNF because one access uh, is really coming from the routing domain and the voice domain. So we have few VNF, of course, uh, that we, we can deliver and sometimes which are even embedded in, into our virtualization layer. But at the end of the day, we know that uh, service providers have their own portfolio and uh, one of the value of this disaggregation is really for them to choose what application they want to run on, on, the, uh, on the UCP. And that's really what we have focused uh, on when we have developed our uh, one OS slim which is the middleware for the virtualization. Uh, and really the idea behind uh, is to get a very strong performance on this VT6 appliance, because we know from a TCO perspective that uh, we have uh, some challenge. One of the first use cases uh, is SD1, of course. Uh, this SD1, in fact, is really driven by the service provider willing to move away from the gray box approach uh, of uh, the SD1 vendors and leverage a cost-effective UCP platform running SD1 as a VNF. Uh, and that's the first step of this uh, 
driving uh, for the service provider. So what they're looking for is really a low footprint, uh, optimized data pace, because of course the VNS needs to be present, to be efficient to run on this uh, small end platform. Uh, and more recently, uh, we have also introduced an SD1 solution, uh, and then they will be able to leverage the Akinops SD1 solution directly out of the OneOS 6 LIM uh, as a bare metal option uh, if they want uh, to, to leverage our solution as an SD1 solution. Okay. So, so when did you start, or when did Equinox started to uh, uh, focus on the disaggregation? Is it uh, five years ago? Is it ten years ago? When, when did you uh, actually... It's, yeah, it's a bit more than four, four years ago uh, that when we have started this, uh, what we call by in the past the OVP mm -hmm. uh, program. So it's five years ago. And one of the main drivers, to be honest, was the, the third use case, this vertical market segment, mm -hmm. where one of our customers was willing, in fact, to host on top of routings its own application mm -hmm. on, on the white box. Uh, and we worked together with Ladder huh, uh, on, on that one. That's where we have a very large deployment, huh, by the way. Uh, we have a bit more than 2,000 edge deployed in Arch environment. So uh, that, that they are on the boat. Huh, so uh, we have to be very uh, resilient and uh, and very uh, efficient in the way we are managing our devices. Right. And that was the starting point for us. And, and of course, uh, we, we continue to that with what we have called this OneOS 6 name, which is the convergence, in fact, mm -hmm. of our routers together with our virtualization capabilities, where we have merged everything in the single, in the single operating system. And that's where this disaggregation was making a lot of sense for us, mm -hmm. uh, of course, to address this service provider uh, approach. And how do you uh, how do you uh, accommodate the uh, zero touch provisioning piece of that? Because that's usually uh, uh, everybody talks about zero touch provisioning, but there is no common common way of doing it, right? So how how, how would you uh, how are you addressing this? In, in fact, we have several ways of doing that. Uh, of course, uh, as we support VNF, so if it, again, it's depending if we are talking about zero touch from the platform standpoint or from the VNF standpoint. But we cover both. Uh, so we have a platform which is called OneManage, which is the management platform of our solution, mm -hmm. and which is able to do zero touch for our own uh, UCP, so our own hardware and uh, the operating system, the middleware 106 LIM, but which is also able to act as a gateway uh, mm -hmm. for the zero touch with third party uh, VNF vendors. So typically, uh, we are able to deploy uh, for VNF, which are supporting these kind of things, some dynamically, some dynamic information in order to boot the VNF, mm -hmm. to recover some information and to push by example, uh, and we did that for VeloCloud, we push the information to the VNF, which orchestrator they should connect to, and then they are able at their starting point uh, also to go up to their own zero touch provisioning for finally not only cover the zero touch of the system itself, the, the UCP, but also for the VNF and the services associated to it. Okay. And, and that's the way we need it. So we support standards like Cloudinit on, on the VNF that we are pushing right. in order to do this kind of thing and to interact with those different VNFs. Very good. Thank you. Okay, so if you want to see how we, we, we combine our efforts, in fact, so we are delivering two packages uh, together with, with Liner. So the first one is what we call the Akinops 106 Slim package. So that that's one platform of, of Liners with different uh, options and, and I think you, you will explain that a yeah. little bit more later on and a bit more better than me <laughs> at the end. So this one really brings you uh, a white box together with one OS 16 where you can run a virtual machine on top of that and of course you have all uh, the management layer that you uh, which is delivered within this solution. So local infrastructure manager GUI, so we have a local GUI but also all the management plane uh, when you want to connect uh, to this box from a third party orchestrator or even in our case from our own one managed solution. And here, this is a very small footprint. We work a lot to leverage uh, the Intel solution. So we are leveraging SRIUV, DPDK, we will be leveraging Quad, TPM. So the, the, really for the, the idea for us was really to take benefits of what the platform is delivering uh, to us and for the third party VNF. So that's the first bundle. And then service provider may decide which VNF they want to run on top of that. Then we made a second bundle uh, together, uh, which is where we bring uh, our embedded routers. Because as part of the OS 6 name, we have also completely embedded our routers. 
uh, which used to run on a very small platform uh, already. Mm -hmm. So we had already uh, efficient routing capabilities. So now you are able to turn it uh, just as a license uh, out of this one and six teams to enable these routing capabilities. And as we deliver SD1 as well as a, an option of four routers, in reality, it's purely a license of four routers. You can also enable uh, this SD1 Express license, and then suddenly you have a universal CPE, which first enable you to host third-party VNF, but which also, uh, as a bare metal solution, deliver uh, SD1 capabilities uh, with a very strong uh, performance in regards to the footprint of the overall solution. Very good. So the challenge is always to uh, to uh, use the lowest footprint, right? So what I'm uh, gathering in the market is, you know, as you said, you know, everybody thinks the hardware comes for free, but uh, you know, you need a baseline on uh, performance to uh, to actually run the code, right? Yeah, exactly. So uh, as you mentioned, Hans, and that's something which is very interesting because. As you said, in the mindset of people, hardware is for free. In reality, we are not yet there, That's right. <laughs> for sure. Yes. Uh, and we will never be there. And at the end of the day, the service provider wants to rip the legacy platform uh, within a universal CP platform. But the pricing point, of course, individually uh, of each platform is not the one of the UCP. The UCP will always be cheaper if you add three or four different platforms together. Yeah. But when we start with one single services, of course, Comparing uh, to a standard CPE platform, it may look a bit more expensive at the starting point, and that's where we need uh, both work to be very efficient yeah. uh, in order to uh, minimize the impact to introduce this universal platform. Yeah, very good. So, very quickly, I, I think you can read the slide, but a few things that you, you can uh, get out of this slide is the first thing is we have been awarded last year uh, by the MEF uh, as a technology award uh, of our 106 team. And I think the idea behind uh, of the MEF uh, uh, credits is really the fact that we are open. So we work uh, as an open software, so we can run on any type of uh, uh, x86 platform, so depending on the size. We support multi vendor VNF, we don't have any lock-in, so even our competition used to run uh, on our VNF, uh, on our uh, UCP. So we are working with service providers to support them into their go-to-market and not to enforce them using our own technology for the VNF, and we have open API in order to integrate with uh, orchestrators. We are doing everything in net confiance, so that's very straightforward for them to integrate. Uh, as you mentioned, we also uh, focusing on, on this footprint uh, that, that you mentioned, which is the key point uh, to enable service provider to, to start launching universal CPE on, on, a, on a wide range. But of course, uh, and I think you very well mentioned it, uh, is this deployment and manageability. Yeah. Uh, we Firstly, believe that uh, the model of the NFV, uh, which is at the beginning a bit like the App Store uh, for service provider, we are not yet there. Uh, we are not yet there for several good reasons. One of them is, of course, the SLA that the service provider is delivering to their customers. So we are not exactly in the same concept that the App Store where you consume and if you are not happy, you throw away. Uh, and it's free as long as you don't want to, uh, to pay for advertisement. We are not yet there on the networking side. What we have seen with service provider is delivering services, which is well-defined, of course, that you can update huh, uh, along the time, but it's not just a pick and choose. Uh, it's not that simple when we are talking about networking, and that's really the way uh, our solution is working. We build network service design, uh, which can be upgraded, and then the service provider will be able to replicate that very easily, uh, and then maintain that in operation uh, through our overall solution. Yeah, and what I gather also is MEF is actually, uh, I think there's a working group uh, focusing on uh, certifying, developing and certifying universal C, uh, SD1 platforms. Yes. So, so, so because, because there was yeah. no, no standard really before, right? There was no, no guidance on that. So, and I think MEF, you know, is uh, doing some work on this as well. Exactly, exactly. So the, the MEF is doing two several axes. Uh, one of the SD1 itself and certifying some SD1 solution, and we are engaged with the MEF and 70 in order to get our solution certified. Of course, uh, they are also uh, they have launched recently a service activation uh, uh, workshop in order to understand how all those services can be activated, and that's something that we will participate in too as well. And that's really some of the key elements, uh, as you know, and uh, to. Uh, 
to work with service providers in yeah. order to uh, give some guidance to uh, the overall industry how things should be done in order to, for them to integrate that easily. Very good. So now if we, if we look very quickly on, uh, on our SD1 uh, value proposition, uh, I won't enter into the details, but the idea is really again uh, this performance point. Uh, so we are very performant. We used to deliver our SD1 on the smallest platform that we have, which is a very small CPE, uh, which is uh, almost a solo CPE. Uh, so uh, that, that's something where we used to be very strong. And when we come to white box, of course, for us, uh, we, we, we have plenty of resources compared to what we used to do on our traditional CPEs. Yeah. So typically, uh, then uh, getting one core uh, of data pen on a Xeon D, we are able to make 400 megs, uh, bidirectional IP set. So th that's our DNA, uh, tuning everything on the network side to, to, to have very rich performance. Very good. Then the second point, which is also uh, what you mentioned, uh, is really how to implement and deploy and upsell. Because at the end of the day, yeah. we know that service providers may offer to their customer, they choose to take it or not to take it. Uh, but what is very important for them is how they can upsell and deploy this solution. And, and what is interesting with the SD1 from making is it's fully embedded into the OneOS 16. So that means you just need to activate it. The customer wants SD1, instead of shipping a new box or defining a new services, anything, you can directly enable the license, right. and then you will get SD1 on, out of the box. Very good. And, and the last, but not least, is the profitable model for service provider. Uh, because of course, we have one box. Uh, we deliver the basic services, which is the connectivity is together with SD1 at, at, from the same infrastructure. We have also this three-tier uh, orchestration model, uh, because we know that service provider may also resell the UCPE and the SD1 through partners, and we are uh, supporting this kind of model as well. And of course, for an SD1 perspective, we have a pay-as-you-grow architecture. So you will only deploy resources for the SD1 when you have the customers and when you deploy the services, and there is no uh, big upfront uh, that you have to, uh, to start with in order to, uh, to deploy SD1 for a given customer. Because at the end, the idea for us was to address this SMB market uh, of the SD1, and we know that uh, it will take time, and we know that we have to scale uh, in order yeah. to make that happen and not put a strong uh, upfront cost to the service provider. Yep, very good. So now if we are looking a bit what we have done on our joint approach, huh? so we used to work with Lanner and now since years huh, on this universal CPE. Yep. Uh, Lanner is part of our default uh, product that we are offering when Equinox is selling uh, its own, uh, its own uh, white box. Uh, of course, uh, the, the intent that we are working together here is to continue with this partnership and uh, to leverage the technology that you are delivering to us huh, uh, within our own solution in, in order for uh, both of us uh, to take benefit of that and finally to simplify the go-to-market for the service provider. And, and I think that's what is very important in this collaboration we have with you, huh, uh, especially on the US market where we are able now uh, with Liner to, to ship box directly pre-configured uh, with our OneWay 6 leaks directly from the Lanner uh, inventory. And yeah. we really expect, and we have very good feedback on, on this approach as well. Yeah, so that's where we, you know, we started this white box model um, about uh, four or five years ago. Um, and, um, you know, ever since we have direct engagement with service providers, um, there is a need to have a, sort of a pre-configured, pre-validated platform. And in fact, we, we, we work together also on the certification aspect. So uh, having, uh, you know, Verizon ODI for the LG connectivity, but also, uh, you know, other certification for the most um, applicable platform. It's uh, shortening the, uh, the headache for the service provider to actually integrate everything together. So, so it's definitely a big value, right, uh, together. Yeah. So. Oh, that's clear, definitely. We see a very good value uh, out of that, and uh, we really expect to accelerate uh, furthermore the, uh, the approval and the acceptance exactly. of, of such approach to the market. Exactly. Yeah, so, um, yeah, as I mentioned, white boxes. Uh, so we, um, pro we uh, built a portfolio of white boxes which can scale from ultra small, small, medium, and large. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, that the, the key element here is that we actually manage to uh, meet all the requirements for the service providers in order to uh, be deployed. Initially, you know, when SRIOV was uh, not fully adopted in the market, we had platforms which had limitation on the SRIOV part. Now, today, 
we meet all reports where SLIOV is enabled, uh, Trusted Platform Management is built into this as well. We're using a full-fledged uh, BIOS uh, from AMI, um, so that's helping also to do um, implementations for, let's say, bi uh, remote updates, BIOS updates, uh, modifications, and we have other partners who are uh, building automation tools. Uh, imagine you have up to 30,000 devices in the field and you need to do some some modifications or changes uh, on firmware options. There are so many devices on the platform itself. That is a big differentiator to deploy it. It's not a generic compute platform. It will run on anything. The thing is, the takeaway here is it's, a, it's an optimized platform for the business model to sustain that. So that's, you know, I'm glad we, we can work together with Equinox. And, you know, we, we learned quite a bit uh, throughout the years um, to optimize our white box platform. So, you know, very, uh, very interesting. So, yeah. Yeah, and, you, you know, you can go through the end of this. Um, so, so, yeah, you know, keep in mind, you know, any service provider, you know, you, we know it's a very, very competitive market. It's very cost sensitive. But there are some elements which are really a must have. Because if you compare the, uh, the acquisition cost to the operating cost, um, there might be something uh, not in the short term. You know, I think you know the idea is to think longer term. Um, so you don't want to update, as Mark was saying, you don't want to update the hardware every two years because the enterprise is growing, and you need to add to add additional functionality, additional VNFs. So that's something to keep in mind. We know that uh, you know some use cases are very cost sensitive on the low end. We can accommodate that, but also to keep in mind, you know, what's going to happen in two to three years. So, Mark, thank you very much. Um, you know, I'm very uh, pleased to see that we're progressing very well together, um, and uh, you know, hopefully, we'll have many other opportunities to work on. Um, but uh, for that, I, uh, you know, thank you and. Um, Merci and uh, bon journée. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Sven, and uh, bon journée <laughs> to you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye.